Hello, architects. Have you been watching my recent videos on storage first APIs? Or maybe you're just building anything with a queue or some kind of durable message channel on AWS and you're wondering what the heck do I do if there's a problem? I'm sure you've been there at some point. You've had a message in a queue, request comes in, stored in the queue, and for some reason it fails. Maybe the customer input is bad, your code can't handle it, it fails, and then suddenly that message is stuck in the queue and it's holding the queue up and it's what we typically call a poison pill message. A message comes in and it blocks the rest of your messages being processed and you're thinking, how do I get around this? Because it's only one message. The other nine messages in the queue might be okay. Of course. There's a solution to this problem. And that's what we're going to have a look at in this video. We're going to look at error handling, dead letter queues, how you can move these poison pill messages away from the rest of your system so that other messages can keep processing. And then importantly, once you fix the bug, how you can quickly and easily move the messages back into the source queue using one of the newest features announced for Amazon SQS. Let's get straight into it. So to demonstrate this example, you are going to be in the same repository we're using in this entire video series. The video is the, the repository looking at architecture patterns. And what I want to show you first is just how you've set up this error handling. And please don't do this in a production system. This is just a really easy way for me to demonstrate failures. So what I've got going on here is that if an environment variable on the Lambda function of force failure is set to Y, and the customer order that comes in is for a customer with the name failure, yeah, I know, it's a stretch, but come on, it's an example. Then if all that happens, we're gonna throw an exception. So we're gonna simulate here some data coming in, um, the payload of which we're not ready to handle for whatever reason, and we're just gonna throw an error, we're just gonna crash. And if we look at that, so if you deploy this CDK code into your own AWS account, come to the AWS console and go over to the Lambda console, and you can see you've got all the different Lambda functions that have been deployed. We're interested in the create order handler. And within here, if you go to the configuration, as you can see, there's no configuration here currently. So if I edit these environment variables, change that to force failure, of course, you're all watching, so I can't actually type oh wow that was that was poor um and we set that to y so we now got force failure set to y that'll update almost instantly and now we can force a failure on this lambda function if we jump over to postman now and we're going to send a request into our api that'll respond quickly remember this is going straight to an sqs queue 200 okay and now if you have a look at the sqs console you see we have one message in flight. So this is our um, order processing queue, our create order API queue. One message in flight. Everything seems to be working okay, right? Let's go and have a look at the CloudWatch logs for this function. So you'll open up the CloudWatch console. You can have a look at the latest log stream and you can see we've got an error. So this, has been, this message has been processed once and it's errored. That's what we expected. Processed again. Oh, error again. Forced failure. Huh, that doesn't look like a useful error message for us to go and try and debug. Huh, and then one more error. Okay, something's broken. Something's wrong. There's something up with this payload. Well, the observer among you will have seen the failure in the customer name. <laughs> it's an example, of course. So what has happened here? Well, it's failed three times. And if you go back and look at the SQS queues now, you can see that actually you've got one message and you might need to refresh this a couple of times. The, the um, value shown here in the SQS console are approximates. So you might need to refresh this a couple of times and the numbers might jump around a little bit. But what you'll see eventually is you've got one message now in the other queue. This message has been moved out. You can see that right here. We've got one and one. Well, we know that isn't true because we've got one in the error queue. So what's happened here? How have you 
manage to move that cue because you've not seen me do anything and I've not done some magic recording, pause the video and move the cue over. This has all happened automatically. So let's have a look at the actual cue itself. This is the create order cue. This is what our API is storing the message into. And if you look at this dead letter cue tab, you see that you've got a dead letter queue configured here. And this is the queue that the message has been moved to, of course. And we've got this maximum retrieve receives set to three. You remember, if we go back to the CloudWatch console, we've got error, 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 three errors. And then the message has been moved. And these values are completely configurable. We can, you can change that. You can set that to a thousand, you can set that to one. It's completely in your control. That'll change based on the use case that you have. So, the message is coming from our API, it's hit the queue, there's something wrong with that message, our customers have done something weird and wacky that we just didn't think they would ever do. Our functions tried to process that three times, and then it's moved that off to a separate queue. And now we've got this message in a different queue that we can go and do some analysis on. Maybe you could have a look in here, you could come into the console, send and receive messages. Maybe you have a look at the message and you see, ah, yes, of course, this is what the problem is. I need to push out a bug fix or I need to make a change somewhere. I need to do something else. All of this, of course, is configurable in the AWS console. If we, you go and have a look at the actual storage first API now, and you have a look at the SQS with unique ID generation. This is the one that uses the workflow and generates the ID for us. You see that we create, first create an error queue, and that name is the name of the integration plus storage DLQ. And then when we create our actual queue, the, the queue that our API is gonna communicate with, we set up the dead letter queue. The letter queue, as you saw, the max received count is three and the queue for the dead letter queue is the error queue. So it's really easy to configure this as part of your infrastructure as code. Whatever infrastructure as code provider you're using, you'll be able to, you'll be able to set this up. And this is completely AWS's responsibility now. So your Lambda function code can just stay focused on your business problem. You can just throw an error if you have some kind of problem. And AWS will handle the responsibility for taking that moving that over to a different location. Zero operational responsibility for you, more responsibility for AWS. The kind of responsibility that we all love as developers. Okay, so now you've got the message actually in the error queue and what do you do with it? Of course, you might just purge it, you might just get rid of it, it might be just a complete nonsense, but that's typically not the case. Typically you'll look at the message, you'll realize that Ah, there's something wrong, we need to push out a bug fix, we need to make a change. And then you wanna reprocess the message. So the first thing I'm gonna to do to demonstrate this, I'm gonna come back to my Lambda function and I'm going to simulate the pushing out of a bug fix. The easiest bug fix ever. Hit remove there and we fixed the bug. Woohoo, well done everybody. You've just fixed the issue in this production Lambda function. Please don't be clicking around in the console in production. Like, just just use, it, use IAC, please. So we fixed the bug now, and you've got the message sat in the dead letter queue, and you've got, you wanna get it back into your actual order processing queue now. Well, recently AWS announced a new feature of SQS, which is the move APIs. And this is a set of APIs that allow you to trigger a move task to move a message from one queue to another. And you can do that completely programmatically. AWS will handle that. So if you come back into your IDE now and go and have a look at the handlers and have a look at the reprocess failed messages handler. And this is a really simple handler that can be triggered manually. This could be triggered by a scheduled event bridge event. So we've got a CloudWatch event as the input. We'll have a look at event bridge inputs in a later video. Just for the purposes of this video, we're gonna trigger this manually. This is a certain schema we'll use. And then, we use this start message move task async API. And if you don't see that against your SQS SDK, you might just need to bump the version of your SDK to the latest. And this move task simply takes in a source queue and a destination queue. And also optionally, you can pass in um, a max number of messages per second to process to allow you to kind of buffer the downstream system. Because if this was a, you know, a production bug that had been pushed out, you could have tens, hundreds, thousands of messages in this dead letter queue. So this allows you to kind of buffer the source as you push everything back in, but we're gonna let everything flow through. The reason I've put this in a Lambda function is so that it can be triggered programmatically, automatically. So you've got that there. Let's go.
come back over to the AWS console now and actually trigger that message processor. So back into my Lambda function, list of Lambda functions, look for the reprocess failed messages function. And then we're gonna test this Lambda function. We're gonna trigger it from within the console. And what you want to do is in this template section, filter that down to CloudWatch is what you want to set that to. And make sure you change the detail here to a string. So test. We can now test this Lambda function. It will complete really quickly. You get nothing back, nothing's happened. We've not got any log messages or anything here in, in the Lambda function code, and that just completes successfully. If you come back to SQS now, messages have moved. And you can see they've completely gone. So you, like I say, you get the odd where it jumps back in, but it's not moving back in, I promise. It's just the approximate numbers in the SQS queue, the way the queues work. And then if you come back to your create order message handler, you'll have a completely new log stream. You have a look at that. And this is the exact same message that's been processed. You see the customer name is failure. The discount code is disc123. The identifier is 2342FF. And if we come back to Postman, you see that's 2342FF. So this is the same message, but this time it's been processed successfully. We fixed the bug. We moved everything back. Now the processing works successfully. That new API that AWS have added, the start move task, is a really powerful API because it allows you now to programmatically, automatically trigger, trigger a task that will then cause all the messages to move back to the source queue and process. And you can control how the messages get moved back to the source really easily. So that's error handling. And if you're using queues on AWS, I would always recommend setting up some kind of dead letter queue. Make it part of your default construct or your default pattern in your organization. Because as much as you think you might understand your users, you might understand the inputs to your system, at some point, somewhere, at some time, there is going to be some data that comes in that you just didn't expect. And you want to handle that. You want to move that off to one side and let the rest of your system keep functioning you can then come back to that message later, fix the bug, move it back, happy days, everything's running, your system is back online. As always, if you've liked this video, then please like and please subscribe. If there's anything else you want to see me cover in this video series, then please reach out on social media, Twitter, LinkedIn, whatever your favorite social media network is. And of course, I will see you all next week.